So today we thought we would do a little bit of a Q&A and kind of just our background and how we got started and how we became stylists and how we started the blog and our Instagram because it's, it feels important for us yeah. to be able to share because the blogging Instagram um, world is so saturated right now and our well, we feel our USP is the fact that, yes, we have the blog, we've got our YouTube channel, we've got our Instagram platform, but our backbone to our careers is the fact that we're stylists. And we were stylists a really long time yeah. in different kind of industries before we started the blog. And a lot of you don't actually know that. No. So when they, you ask us kind of how we know how to put things together and about our eyes, because we had a lot of training, we did it for what, like, 30, 25 years combined. And um, we're gonna to share to you our work history and kind of how we got started in the industry and then answer some questions yeah. that we received Yeah, because we put it out on Instagram because we wanted to ask you guys, because we do often get asked so many questions, like how did we get into the blogging world? How did, you know, what were our jobs before? Yeah. Um, so we wanted to make sure that we got the questions and to be able to answer the things that we know you guys want to hear. We were inundated with so many questions, which is great, but we just feel like we need to do like a like a blog post yeah. or maybe even another YouTube video on this so we, we put together our favorite ones we're going to kind of share to you our personal histories and then we're going to answer the questions that we receive we'll try and not go on and not yeah on and, and on. also if there's any more that we haven't answered or haven't covered um if you click the arrow in the corner um you'll get the comments box and you can leave yeah. us a comment and we'll try and answer them as well yeah exactly that's a good idea so it's also a good way for you to get to know us a bit more and and hopefully you'll find it interesting. Who's going to go first? I'm making you go first, Bills. My career before We Are Twin Set. So I um, I always knew that I, you know, fashion was in my blood. My whole family have always been um, in the fashion industry. So it was always going to be my direction. Um, so I started off at London College of Fashion. All my friends went to uni Leeds, Manchester, Birmingham. I was the only one that stayed in London, which at the time you can imagine was really hard. We weren't friends then, by the way. We hadn't found each other yet. It will Ooh. be revealed. <laughs> um, so I, did, I, I had no friends from school or, you know, anyone that I really knew here I made good friends at uni. Um, what was the course that you studied? So it was a foundation course at London College of Fashion in on Mare Street, East London. And I felt so cool, I felt so cool going there. Um, and it basically meant that I learned all different fields within fashion. So photography, um, visual merchandising, styling. You loved photography at the beginning. At didn't the you? time I loved, and I still do. Um, and even then, I don't think I didn't, I, I knew I wanted to be a stylist, but you, at that age, you're young enough to explore, take the time to actually see which avenue you want to go into. And that's why I loved that course. And I think, I mean, we're going to talk about this more, but the best piece of advice, I think you'll agree with me, is if you want to get into the industry, is try out these different aspects. Exactly. Get a taste for it, because there's actually stuff now that we don't even really know no. what the, the now career path. So until you kind of get your foot in the door and find out all the different areas, it's really good to kind I, of get a taste for I it. I feel like there are loads of different work experiences um, available now where you go into companies and you can be on the whichever desk you can kind of do a yeah. day on each desk which is really great because when you're at that age if you don't if you know you want to go into one field but you don't know which avenue it's, and it's really constantly great. changing now I think as well so you might go and work for a magazine and then the magazine could fold exactly. so then it's like you're going online and exactly you know so anyway so I did the foundation course which was a year and I loved it um, and then it was the summer break before I was about to start the London Co College of Fashion photography degree styling and photography degree sorry then and what happened during that summer um it was around the time where internships at magazines were not a big thing do you remember the program hit the hills lauren conrad that whole Whitney. vibe yeah it was really new it wasn't what it is now for sure there were you know you just you didn't really know to apply for an internship at a magazine and, and like be stuck in the fashion cupboard so I remember that summer, I thought, right, that's what I want to do. I probably watched the programme, just thought I want to be Lauren Conrad. Applied for loads of different magazines and got Glamour magazine, Harper's Bazaar, Stella at the Telegraph, 
supplement and you magazine when i was at stella magazine um the fashion director there charlie harrington who still today is my stylist guru i really look up to her she actually gave me the advice and said which you know it was quite brave of her to give this advice to some i was young at the time and she just said listen like i don't think you should go back to uni i think you should continue doing your internships continue learning the field you obviously love it and you're good at it. Um, I'll help you with your CV and get you loads of different placements for the summer. And she did. I called my mum that, that I went to the toilet during that lunch break. I said, mum, I'm going to defer my degree. I'm going to do more internships. And if I don't land a job at the end of next year, it's great. I can still go back and do my degree. My mum freaked out, but it all worked out for the best. And that's when so Charlie helped me and I landed the internship position at U Magazine. And I basically never left for 12 years. So I worked my way up from the intern um, to the fashion assistant, to the style editor, to then my last role before having Alfie as the fashion editor running the fashion team. So in a very quick roundabout way, that was my career. So I, we met during probably when I had, was the fashion assistant. We were both, yeah. Well, we were both fashion assistants. We met at an M&S press day. So for those of you who don't know, a press day is where a brand will showcase their kind of new season collections. So we met and we were both assisting at the time. And we kind of knew each other from around, didn't we? And just kind of caught each other's eye and we were like, hi, hi, oh, you work in fashion? Yeah, me too. Oh, we live in the same area. And we said, oh, we should go out for dinner. And I think you messaged me on Facebook or I messaged you on Facebook. And then the next week we went out for dinner. No, do you know what I remember? I remember receiving a text from you. I was on going around on press days. I remember I, I so remember, I never have a good memory. I remember this. What are you gonna say? I don't I know. was in Covent Garden on press days. I remember getting a text from you saying, I can do this date, this date, this date. And at that time, I wasn't organized enough to have a diary. And I remember thinking, Oh my gosh, she's so on it. Like, how does she know that really she's wanted free to be in like three weeks' time on that Wednesday? <laughs> anyway, went out for dinner. We went out for dinner. We were twinning back then, still yeah. twinning now. In our Gap Biker boots. Gap Biker boots, gilets. And that was kind of it, really. Well, I think we'll go on to more about what happened when we... Fit our yeah, because it. that's actually also... A lot of you have asked us those yeah. kind of questions. So that's your that work was me. history. Yeah, and I had like the most amazing time at U Magazine. Even when I was the assistant, I was... Um, assisting Caroline Baker who absolute legend another shout out to her and she took me under her wing I learned so much from her everything I know now I learned it from her she is she you know is was like a really amazing stylist and I remember like one trip I literally went to New York for a day just to drop off the suitcase for her shoot and then fly home and I was so young and it was such an amazing experience but yeah, so that was um, me in a quick roundabout way. And then Twin Set And then born. Twin Set took off. So I'll tell Your you a bit turn. about my history, which was quite different to yours, actually. Mm. So I did go to uni and I always knew that I wanted to get into fashion as well. I loved always clothes, shopping, kind of style. I always used to dress family members. My family weren't in the business. Um, but it was always like a really big passion of mine. However, I felt like I wanted to go to uni to get like a general degree just in case. My family very much like, you know, if it doesn't work out, you know, have a general degree. So I went to Birmingham and I did business and I really, really loved it. And I was there for three years, but the minute I finished and actually in some of my holidays, uni holidays, I did work experience. And I feel like that was key to both of us, to getting where we are, was yeah. just work experience, work experience, yeah, work absolutely. experience. I sent so many emails and had like various kind of part-time jobs and stuff, just f finding your way in the industry and knowing what it was, the area. Because how do you know you yeah. like it? You might like the idea of it, but a lot of the time the reality is so different, different. to what you think it and is. And also we really did make teas. I remember I did work experience at handbag.com. It was, it was one of the first fashion websites. It was kind of, I loved it there. I think I was there for a couple of months during one of my, you know, when I finished uni. And one day I just had to organize all the um, lookbooks. lookbooks in alphabetical order and color it's order. So funny and I like doing that. It's so funny you should say that because that would be a big tip from both of us is doing the job as an intern that no one else wants to do because that's how you stand out. Yeah. Because I remember... 
at Glamour magazine. There was about five different interns in the fashion cupboard. I remember one of the editors came up and said, can one of you girls please come and sort out the lookbook cupboard? So imagine, which I'm sure is the same way you It was were. like a, a shelves. Shelves, but literally like jam, jam packed. packed. And there were all the wrong seasons. And I remember I said, yeah, I'll, I'll do it. And right, I did people it. people use lookbooks like that anymore? Yeah, everything's, everything's online. online. Um, anyway, so I... Well, no, no, what I want to say um, is I did it and then I was asked to go yeah. on the shoot the next week. So it's doing those jobs and making yourself known as being a hard worker at yeah, such a long age. Yeah, and also you're learning every... You know, even now when we have to, when we go on jobs and we do we work with brands, we don't mind doing the stupid things because you, you have to. Yeah. And I think... You've got to work your way up and learn how every single process works in order to kind of make it. it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, so I went to uni, did business, really enjoyed it. Then it was work experience, work experience for me. But I knew I liked styling, but I don't think I really knew what styling was, if that made sense. So I did quite a lot of PR work experience. And then I bumped into Mark Hayes, who is the fashion presenter on the Lorraine show, when I was doing a work experience and I was in Topshop Oxford Circus, obviously doing a bit of shopping after one of my work experiences. And I used to always watch him on TV and I loved him and I just, I saw him and I thought, I've got to go up to you and ask you for work experience. So I went up to him being all ballsy and I was like, oh, I love you. Can I come for work experience? And at that time... I so it, can imagine <laughs> doing that. At that time, it wasn't, there wasn't really a job there or anything. I kind of just went and started doing work experience, loved the TV side of it, um, loved working kind of with real life models. I just loved it there. Like I really felt like I loved every single day of working there. So I was there, obviously I'm on maternity leave at the moment for like 15 years. What's it that long? Well, I'm 34 now, 21, 14 years. That's mental. There are 14 years. And you do get used to the 4 a.m. wake up, let me tell you. And everyone said it's going to put you You're in good stead. With it's going to put, you in, put you in good stead of having a baby. It doesn't. Um, but yeah, so I worked my way up there, had amazing experiences. And I feel like for me, every day it was really different. I don't know if you felt like that at you. Um, I think more so when I was interning and in fashion assistant because you were kind of, you know, pulled here, there, and everywhere. And then I feel like when I had my role as heading the desk, I. Although I was doing the main fashion shoots, a lot of it actually was kind of making sure the rest of the mm. team were okay. So I, I kind of had my schedule for the day. And I, that's what I, I'm very good with routine, structure, schedules, knowing, you know, what my day is going to kind of look like um, within reason. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I think ours was probably, my path was a bit different because... Every day was, as I said, yeah. really different. So one day we'd be on, you know, in the shop styling. The next day I'd be on a shoot. The next day I'd be on the studio. Then I'd be going here, there. And I love that. Like, and also for you, it was so last minute. Because yeah. how long did you film before it went live? Oh, sometimes we'd know that night or that morning. So right. everything was really kind of on the go. And I'd buzz off that. Yeah, I, whereas I, that I, for me, literally, it would send me over the edge. I like being organised, but then kind of finding out what you're shooting and then you've got a day to get you it like done. You like the thrill of it. I love the thrill of it. Whereas I, love I prefer a steady approach. So I yeah. need like, so at the magazine, we yeah. had like yeah. a, we had like a six to eight week lead time. So I shoot something maybe, you know, eight weeks before it went live. So I'd have time to shoot it, edit it, go through it all, go through the layouts with the art team, um, which suits my approach yeah <laughs> but yeah so I think we both kind of got our love of styling and we kind of just we learned so much yeah. on the way from all the different people you've worked with and the brands that we work with and the people that we met kind of along the way I think a good point to make is at which point in our careers did we start to insert so I was fashion assistant and yeah yeah same so yeah um it was about what, six years ago yeah seven years ago now Sounds about right. You had, you were just getting married, is that right? Yeah, yeah, just. No, it was after. Was it after? So I think we. Yeah, I think it was maybe. It's so why I've been married nine years. It must have been yeah, seven eight years. We yes years we. So we started the blog. We were courting each other. <laughs> a mutual friend. We actually have told this story about quite ten a few thousand times. times. But so very quickly, a mutual friend of ours just kept saying to us, "You've got to start." blog I always want to know what you're wearing so so does everyone else yeah. basically and people would always say to us wherever we went whether it be work on the weekend oh I love your top I love your jacket where's it from and I suppose 
because of our work, we kind of thought, well, we have got this expertise. We should share it with people. So it started off very much on the side. We would just do it on the weekends. We had our husbands to take our photos, which as you But we never took the photos together. Total mare. We never took them together. So we would tell each other what we'd want to wear. I'd get Alex to take the photo for me on a Saturday. You'd get Craig. And then we'd send them to each other and comp them side by side. We should actually um, oh, put gosh. a photo. But what I was going to say was, the point... Like we said, the reason that obviously it was started with We Are Twins set was because we were always wearing the same thing. Yeah. And we always, we had the same things in our wardrobe. So we'd go and to shoot we something. And we looked yeah. similar. I think it's the cat eye liner. Mm. But we would, so kind of that's what we wanted to play on, the fact that just the twinning thing. And it wasn't, there wasn't really any duos there. No, not at but the time. But it did start as fun. Like it, I don't and think it's, we, it's very much Yeah, of fun. course. But it is a business. But no, now it's a business. And at the time, you're right, it was very much a bit we of fun. We have no expectations weekend. whatsoever. So yes, yeah, so we started taking our photos. And I think another thing as well to note is because of our jobs, we had really strong relationships with brands. So when we started, we sent an email out to all our contacts. So that was kind of every brand we'd ever emailed. I remember and that was April B. Do you remember? I remember it was being, it was April. And we had such lovely feedback from everyone. Like, wow, you guys, yeah. that's amazing. And we did start to get some projects in Our straight away. Our first project was with M&S. And then Ted Baker. And if you think about it, if you've just, as a, you know, a, a girl in your bedroom starting an Instagram on your own or a blog on, on your own, it takes a while to build up those contacts. And so we were lovely. really fortunate that we had the contacts to be able to, you know, kind of get there fairly quickly yeah but I think in terms of now if you are thinking of starting out I would say you know Instagram is such a powerful tool you can message brands the PR every brand has like a PR Instagram account yeah um, or the main handle and definitely send out send a message to people you know link your profile you've kind of got nothing to lose you've got nothing to lose and also it's just all about putting yourself out there um, and getting yourself seen and you know tagging the brands you're wearing using the hashtags yeah and that's what we did in an old school way just try to get ourselves out there so that kind of that helped ha- us yeah work with the brands build up of you know it's still that it, for us it felt like a really big following at the time I remember you know when we were we got our first 5,000. You were like, wow, we were just so yeah. excited. But it was a slow burner, you know, even with our contacts, like it de- definitely takes time to grow. And also, yeah. I think you need, we needed to work out visually what we wanted it to look like. You know, comping side by side was not the one, clearly. I wonder, we need to look back to see when we stopped the comping and when we actually decided we needed to be together for the shoot. I know. And also we then started to shoot on location and we would go on a weekend to Notting Hill or to... And still that we would just take the husbands with yeah. us. Alex, I've got to say, was far more <laughs> chilled and willing than my husband. I love you, Craig, but you hate taking photos. Um, so yeah, so we... And it just was a slow burn. Like, yeah. I think, and again, that's the key to starting something, just to not have like huge expectations, expectations. because things do take time. And I think you've got to find your feet with it and work out and what works. You know, we've gone through so many different um, visuals and directions for the blog. Even, you know, before, was it before I had Alfie, we were blogging every single day. We were mm-hmm. putting a blog post out every single day on top of our jobs. On top of Instagram every single day. And then obviously we had, you, you know, your life changes and evolves and you have to make your work adapt and work with it. So then when, I can't remember if this was while I was on maternity. No, I did one every day with your maternity. When I came back, obviously we had to make it work for both of us. Yeah. Obviously, you know, your work and everything else was getting really on top of you. I had just had a newborn and I could not keep up with the workload. So it's now we post every Monday and then we started YouTube and now, you know, we're having our website redesigned and, you know, everything think, is yeah. always changing and adapting. And I think that's almost a reason for itself to be successful is to not be really um, rigid. rigid. Yeah. And it's a space that's constantly changing. And we went to a talk a few months ago, it was with Nessa Porter. And I think it was Camille that said something which really stuck with me, which was like, if Instagram disappeared tomorrow... Yeah. Where, well, where what would, would you we be? do? What would we be? So that's just, when we started YouTube. That's when we started, literally, that's when we started YouTube. So it's about having not just an Instagram, but you've got the blog, your Instagram, your YouTube to kind of 
scan all areas just yeah. in case because you don't know if something disappears tomorrow and it's your work and your livelihood you need to kind of be on top of it yeah. but I think it's finding your voice across the platforms so yeah having a point of difference for yeah each. yeah exactly um and look we didn't know this was going to be a business we've kind of just like we said gone gone with it and adapted and we're still learning we're by no means experts absolutely not but we love it and it works for us and I suppose we just wanted to share our story to see if I, we can I help do want to make the point though, because obviously we do make it look all fun and games, and absolutely yes, it is. But we work bloody hard, um, and I think you know a lot of people might just you know look at Instagram, look at a YouTube video. I can do that. I can you know show my outfit and just film it and make it look pretty. But there is so much more that goes into our job than than just the pictures and even just what, yeah just what you see so and um, I think when people say oh I don't have time to this I don't have time to do that obviously it was before kids but we did build this up both working full-time and you can make time to do these things if you want to if you want to we I still feel time starved now so we work two days a week on Tuesdays and Fridays kind of doing all our content but we work day in day out evenings kind of emails Whenever back and forwards can. speaking to brands speaking to each other and I think another thing is that when you have your own business, there isn't necessarily like a rigid schedule because you kind of need to do what you need to do when you need to do it. And it's just trying to keep on top of it and balancing it. And that's where being part of a duo really has really has helped a us. Especially also growing babies. Yeah. We have a huge advantage that, especially in our career, the minute you step out of it, you're forgotten. You don't post for a week. It's like, who are you? So... I would say that's our biggest benefit, apart from a million other points. The fact that we can grow a family, but also have the support of each other to keep the business going while we're taking that time off or, you know, so. whatever else life throws. And also, yeah. I think it's another point which I personally want to say is that I never would have done this by myself mm. because I don't think I would have had the confidence solo to kind of put myself out there. Yeah. But it always felt... Or to keep going. To keep you going. You might have done it, but not... And then, you you know, you would have had a hard week and then you just went, oh, I can't this. do this. Sorry, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> but then I think, because we were both really passionate and we, we started together and since day one, we've known what our strengths and weaknesses are and we've always relied on each other to kind of get us through those hard times as well as the good times. Yeah. So we've always done it together and I think that's been our success because... It's worked. And, and also, I think it's knowing each other's strengths, which yeah. I know you just said, but not being precious about it or competitive about it. You know, Sarah is, if I know a lot of you might think, you know, what are your strengths and weaknesses? What are my strengths and weaknesses? So I would say <laughs> okay. you are very organised. And as you can tell from her career and her background before the blog, she studied business. So Sarah is very much the you know, the structure, the diary, the emails, the keeping on top of, you know, we need to speak to this PR, we need to, you know, you're very yeah. much the like the business head of it. And I'm I would say more, more the crucial. visual. Yeah. So Philippa with her, you know, your photography expertise, she's definitely better when we're on location, be like, right here, the light of this. And because that's something I've never studied, I yeah. don't think that comes naturally to yeah. me, I would say. So you're kind of visually, I, I think creatively, some of the ideas, if we've got to shoot things in a certain way, like you love to get together like mood board, like yeah. ideas and stuff. So I would that's say creatively your that would definitely be your strength yeah i hope we've kind of answered i feel like we've gone off about 20 we have, tangents. but we've, we've we've started with yeah our careers and then we kind of did went on for a few a few tangents but now we've Sorry. got a few extra questions from you guys that we will um now okay, okay so first question so we're gonna do quick fire questions these were yeah we'll, of keep the most we'll try to keep it speedy asked ones there was loads but we've thought these are the most generic ones that everyone will know the answers to right number one how did you grow your followers we kind of already answered that but in a really quick way keep going hashtagging keep developing Ads. different um yeah like with our youtube channel keep going with instagram we're now going into instagram tv like keep going get all the different and respond avenues. to people create yeah. that relationship that's definitely something we found difficult being a duo you people don't feel like necessarily know us because there's two of us that's why i think yeah, youtube definitely 
Um, but yeah, definitely, especially on YouTube, we respond to pretty much most. And if we don't, just keep comments. asking us and we definitely will get back to you. Um, how do you combine it with motherhood? Are the babies easy while working? Do you have mum guilt? I think we combine it with motherhood because we're really, really fortunate that our mums can massively help us out and my mother, mother-in-law as well. So for me, on a Tuesday, my mother-in-law looks after Lenny and Friday my mum does and your mum after nursery so yeah so I drop Alfie off at nursery and then my mum collects him so we work full time Tuesdays and Fridays yeah. and then obviously when we're with the kids as and when so my mum collects him and at, with the whole mum guilt thing when Alfie first I know Lenny hasn't started yet but when I first used to drop Alfie off at nursery and he you know naturally they do the separation anxiety kicks in you drive away feeling so guilty that you've left your child, although the minute you close the door, they're absolutely fine having their breakfast beautifully. You feel guilty because you're leaving your child in the care of someone else who, I, you know, you know that they're going to have a lovely time, but you're just, you know, driving away so that you can do your thing. And, and that feels a bit Do you never feel like that with your mum? No, because necessary. because my mum would never cry when I, you yeah. know, if I leave him with my mum, I'm, you know, he's off playing with her and doesn't even say goodbye to me. But I think, you know, it's for the bigger picture, you know, and for them to be with people that they love. And, you and know, it's so, only, it's a short term yeah. thing with babies. Everything's a phase. And so now I drop him off at nursery. Bye, mummy. And you close the door and you, you have a spring in your step because you know he's happy and now I'm going to yeah. be happy. So and like we said, we're really lucky that we've got the support and I personally wouldn't be able to bring Lenny on a work day or a shoot. And no. I'm guessing you couldn't do no. the Alfie. Maybe I think this second one might have to just go with it. Yeah, but we'll see. Uh, work-life balance and tips of being organised each week and consistency. So that's our absolute key point to making our business work is that we have to have a structure because we are so time starved with the kids and we have so much to cram into our Tuesdays and Fridays. We have to know what we're doing those two days. Otherwise, it's hashtag fail, right? So we know on a Tuesday we film YouTube and on a Friday we film for the blog and Instagram and if we have time we try and fit in meetings with PRs after our shoot so you can imagine the day is full on and I think as well we have lists we work out you know we have a real structure of like when we're when we're shooting when we edit the photos when we respond to emails everything is done and it's kind of done at the same time each week so that we know we just know what we need to do and we just get it done yeah. in short amount of time as possible how do you keep motivated having each other we've answered this as well yeah. right having each other 100 percent has definitely kept us both going through the hard times through the busy times through having babies um yeah absolutely and I think look life sometimes does get in the way and there's been times where you know I just haven't been able to come in or Alfie's been unwell and you know like a couple of weeks ago you haven't been able to come in and we'll both manage yeah. and we get on with it it's not a big deal and that's the huge benefit of working with someone is that the other one can always take over which yeah. I think is special um when did you know you wanted to make this a full-time career so for me when I um I was on maternity leave um, I took a year off the magazine um, after I'd had Alfie. And in that time, obviously, I was working. I was doing as much as I could for the blog um, during the maternity leave. And I just knew then it took a while during my maternity leave. And also, as you can imagine, building up a career at the magazine, my whole, you know, going from the bottom to the top, it was a really difficult decision for me to not go back there. Um but I would say, you know, my life changed, evolved, and I couldn't do everything. And that's key, is knowing that you can't do everything. I'm going to also say one thing about knowing you can't do everything. It's also, this is totally irrelevant, but it just came into my head, yeah. is no, being sure of yourself, I think, yeah. is another key thing. And I don't know if it's going to come up in a question, but while I remember... We're quite good in the fact, I would say, that we don't compare ourselves loads to other people. And I think that's really difficult in this industry is that you're constantly comparing this one's doing this, this one's yeah. doing that. But being sure of who you are and kind of knowing what your strengths are and knowing what your style is, I think is really important in this world because you could just look at everyone else and want to be a bit more like this one and a bit more like that one. And bit, you know, I'm not going to lie, though. The amount of times that we've said to each other, are we too, like, glossy? Are we too done? Do we need to be more edgy? No, but that's, that's not, not us. us. And I think 
as we've got older as well, we definitely know the types of people that we are. We've got a style that we stick to. And maybe that's what's helped kind of propel us because we've always stayed true to who we are. And yeah. again, maybe that's because we work with each other. And there'll be times where Philip will be like, really, Sarah? And I'll be like, really, Philippa? But then we kind of bring each other back down to our roots, which I think is really important if you're yeah. starting out in this business. Who do you admire and look up to and why? You know what I'm going to answer this. Absolutely. I would say something Navy is... So she is, if you don't know, an American influencer, more than an influencer now. Like a... Oh, she's a mum, she's a blogger, she started her own range, and I feel like she's just doing it all and... Keeping it real. Keeping it real and doing it well, and you can see by her success that it's obviously working. So she's always the person that I would say that we look up to. And also, she's not trying to be so edgy, cool... She's just a normal person and hopefully one day we'll aspire to be like her. What's been your best job and why? I think I could probably answer this for both of us. So the definitely um, the Future Dreams ring that we designed with Lola Rose, which is here. Where all proceeds go to support breast cancer. So that was really special for us. Tips on getting through tough days. Did you ever feel like quitting? I think that goes back to working with each other. And staying motivated. And staying motivated and being organised and just being working together, really. What made you start your blog and YouTube channel? We've kind of answered that as well. Like, the fact that you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket with Instagram or any platform. You want to have something that is your own. Yeah. Um, so that's why. And also with YouTube, we definitely started it because we felt that we... Because as a duo, sometimes you lack that personality factor getting that across on a still image on Instagram and on the blog. Um, so that, yeah, that's why we started it. Any tips on getting into the industry? I think we answered it, just loads yeah. of work experience, putting yourself out there, being confident in who you are, and just networking. If you get invited to events, go to them. If you get the chance to meet other bloggers, talk to them, you know, maybe start shooting with other bloggers. Nice to be nice. Always that's be nice to everyone. Too. Work hard and be nice to people. Yeah. Do you face any challenges being a career woman? I would say no. And my reason for that is I have a very supportive husband that loves what I do and is very excited by it. So I, not at all. You? I would definitely agree. We're both really lucky that our sub husbands, husbands, our husbands are really supportive of each other and they've massively helped us grow and get to the fact that we are now because they've given up time and yeah. things to support us and take our photos. What does the average day look like for you ladies? Well, not what people think, which is getting our hair and makeup done <laughs> and like easy ozy with are coffee, walking down Are you going to answer hill. this as in like a work day or like a I think work day. day. Yeah. Go on. So for me... Drop like roll out of bed, get Alfie dressed, put on a tracksuit, take him to nursery, come back, make myself some breakfast, watch um, Lorraine show, um, get myself dressed, meet Sarah. I would. Mine is more get up in the morning, try and get myself ready, put Lenny to sleep, wait for my mother-in-law and my mum to come, try and get coffee on route. That's like my biggest treat in the morning, and somehow just get here. So Sarah always comes. I'm on route to where we shoot. Yeah. So um, Sarah always comes to me first, and then we go. Other days it's more of a struggle than others, but kind of just be really organised and sometimes I'm like brushing my teeth, rushing before my husband needs to work just to try and get as much done as I can but I think I've got my routine down to a T. You can watch my five minute makeup video actually um, and then we shoot or we film videos, we do emails, we have meetings and like we said just keeping this organisation of a diary. Do you know what, I, I quite like this point and I think maybe a lot of you will like it. After we finish shooting, especially on a Friday, sometimes on a Tuesday after We decide YouTube, not to have lunch. <laughs> yeah, no, but oh. we always... <laughs> Lunch is a big thing for us, but also because at lunch we do all of our admin. So we like to be in a really nice environment for that. And I think that's really key, especially if you work freelance or for yourself. Your environment is very important to how much work you get done, your creativity. Yeah. So we like to go to chilled out, nice places, have a nice lunch, enjoy the time. Because yeah. that's what it, you know, like... And you it's know, a fuel. It is, yeah. it is when you're running around I think fuel is really and just important. stopping but, but yeah no I think that's actually a really point because good point because the mornings like once we've like sorted out the kids got ourselves already hadn't even like had a chance to breathe gone on a shoot 
a lot of the time the weather is terrible and you just get on with it and it's actually quite nice to just breathe and take a step back for a moment have a coffee just ask each other what we're doing on the weekend and then get some more work done yeah I agree. agree. I think your atmosphere and stuff helps you to be productive yeah. because if we're in a really noisy cafe, I, we can't even breathe. Oh. Like, I need to have like, I don't even like music or TV or whatever. I'm working. Like I like, no, I think that's, no, I, I agree. that's I agree. a business thing. Yeah. Like when, when we're working from home or something, you kind of sometimes want the TV or music and I need no, silence. No, that was back in the day. I need silence. Back in the day, I used to like music. Now, around. silence, get as much work done and be as productive as possible. Last one. You're answering this one. What's the bo- most beneficial part of working together? What's the most annoying? Woo. You say beneficial, ask me. <laughs> beneficial is having each other, relying on each other brainstorming because sometimes you just can't think of anything you just don't know what to shoot you're feeling uninspired where the other one might have have a great idea or just feel more inspired that day the most annoying part of being a duo i would say is when you're having a really crap day your hair's not looking good you don't like your outfit and then the other one turns up looking like a legend really I've never thought that or like you're really heavily pregnant because we've never been able to never been able I mean like we have like 10 kids <laughs> so far our pregnancies we've always like tag teamed so like if you're feeling grim spotty larger than life and then the other one's probably like in her prime time <laughs> I mean look if you're having maybe a gross day and the other one but I don't really ever I'm not a comparing person so I don't know not at all but there's you don't have to be competitive but you can still be feeling down on yeah. yourself yeah I think just naturally being a woman different times of the month being pregnant not pregnant yeah just sometimes you just, just don't feel good about a, yourself yeah but I don't I don't really think we're, we annoy each other that anyway we hope you enjoyed that and we hope we haven't bored you to death and going off to so many different tangents there will be fashion back on youtube and lots more inspiration for the spring summer season if we ever get spring summer that is because the weather's been dire but anyway that's it from us for this week yeah we hope you enjoyed it let us know any comments if we missed anything out if it made absolutely no sense because that's a huge worry of mine meanwhile but, we of course you know this we don't film this on a sunday night and then go live so we filmed this on tuesday and we are now off to film our first igtv see this so is about hope. keeping on top of the platforms so stay tuned for that we will be promoting it on instagram over the next week or so and um, then we're off to um a meeting so yeah that's our day today See you next when, week. When we're going to have our lunch. <laughs> I don't know, we're thinking about that already. See you next week yeah. at 7.30. We hope you enjoyed it. Don't Please forget to subscribe, subscribe and like it if you did and like, like it. And if you don't like it, that's fine. We'll do it. We'll go back to fashion. And <laughs> we'll, see, we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.